My name is Martin Amman and I'm the head of the office of the Dutch National Rapporteur on Trafficking in Human Beings and Sexual Violence Against Children. Let's call me Martin for the rest of the evening. I think that will do. Tonight I talk about something that ought to concern every person, every company and every nation. I'm talking about modern slavery, something we also know by the name human trafficking. And if we talk about human trafficking or trafficking human beings, most people think about sexual exploitation, like Darcy said, and you all, I saw that in your questions as well. But labor exploitation stays a bit more hidden, a bit more in the dark. And I must say, before I be was asked to become head of the office, it was the same for me. With trafficking in human beings, I was also thinking about sexual exploitation. But I must say I'm more connected now to the whole subject of labor exploitation. And for me, that click, it happened when I arrived at Doha International Airport in Qatar. I was there because of a UN conference organized in Qatar. And when I arrived there at the airport, I did a thing that I always do when I'm at an airport. I checked destinations of departing planes some kind of a nasty hobby of mine but I saw all those planes going to India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and lots of people going towards those planes and I wondered what are all those people doing in this country because Qatar like the Netherlands is a very very small country with about 600,000 inhabitants which is almost the same as the whole city of The Hague that's not much and then you have all those flights coming in. And I asked the other people at the conference, can you tell me what all those people from those countries are doing here? And they told me the women, they are coming here to work as a domestic servant, so they work in houses. And the men, most of the time they work in construction, so they build houses, hotels and stadiums. The stadiums where we hope that the Netherlands will become world champions in 2020, if they qualify. We have to see about that. But um, when I came back, uh, I, I, I did a check. I did a check on what were they doing in Qatar because I, I'm curious. I want to know for myself and besides that, it's my job. So I learned that there are numerous reports by all kinds of organizations of trafficking happening in Qatar. And then it hit me, those people I saw there were victims of trafficking, labor exploitation, walking right past me there on that airport. Me going to a UN conference, they going to modern slavery. And for me, not being able to catch my plane on time is a nightmare. But remember, for them, not being able to board the plane because they are a victim of trafficking in Qatar is reality. And imagine that. If you stand at an airport having a passport and a flight ticket and someone is saying to you, you cannot leave the country, that's a very foreign concept for you. But for them, it's their reality because if their employer, if their tra trafficker will not release them saying they may go, they cannot leave the country. Think about it. But it's easy to point my finger at Qatar because trafficking is a worldwide problem. And I must say, I love my country and I love this city that I live in. But trafficking, labor trafficking, is happening in the Netherlands as we speak. It's here as well. Only last week I spoke with police officers telling me about the ships that we have that go from Rotterdam port to Germany and beyond and all the way back that transport the goods that the big ships bring in. And they told me about the Philippine sailors manning those ships, coming in from the Philippines, thinking they're going to earn a nice wage, at least more than they were used to in the Philippines, and finding once they arrive on those boats that they're earning way less and have to work excess hours and becoming victim of trafficking. It's in the Netherlands and you can see those ships. But we have other examples. Most of you know the people that sell newspapers at your local retail shop and most of the times you see people giving them food or money or saying or saying no thank you um, but we had reports we had cases of those people being trafficked having to give up the money they earned not something you would think about of happening around you 
We also had cases of people working in restaurants. Uh, I had the example here before, but I think it was last week that the police raided a Chinese restaurant because they thought something might be amiss. And they saw the cooks running away and they were gone. And then the police thought, well, hide and seek, we'll find you. We're going to find you. So they brought in a police dog that's trained to find people. And the dog searched and searched and could find no one until they put the dog on top of the big fridge they have in the restaurant and the dog started barking. On top, they found a wooden lid, they removed it, and inside were two shivering Chinese cooks, victims probably of trafficking cases under investigation. But it's happening here, it's happening in the Netherlands. And be aware that if you travel through this beautiful country by car, by train, or you fly over it by plane, you are passing people who are victims of trafficking in this country. And be aware that those victims quite often do not even want to be found because we have always the conception that those people want to be found. But be aware that if you are that Philippine sailor that I was talking about working on that ship going over the Rhine River or the Maas or whatever it's called, if he was promised like earning 1000 euros and he's earning actually 100 or 200 if that's what the traffickers allow him to have after deducting lots of costs because that's what's happening he has to pay to sleep on the boat pay for the food etc all sorts of things that money if he manages to wire that home to the philippines may be very substantial for his family and maybe some other families it may be the lifeline for his family and to send his children to school to have a better future that he does not have himself and that is the extra challenge that the government faces with those victims of labor exploitation they are in a dire situation traffickers do not want you to find them as a government and you have to search for them and in most countries you see that most attention goes to sexual exploitation also the police effort is mostly focused on sexual exploitation but finding those people needs resources you have to look for it otherwise you will not find them you will just pass that boat you will just pass that person selling the newspapers and you will pass the chinese restaurant or even even eating it and being unaware of it so it requires a massive investment and attention of the government and that's the reason why my office exists in the Netherlands, or our office. Dutch Parliament asked for a national rapporteur who can check what the government does, who can check what all institutions are doing and how we in the Netherlands are doing with combating trafficking, because it requires a big effort. And to that extent, we do have access to police files. We do have access to prosecution files. We check what the judges are doing. We check what the shelters are doing. We listen to the stories and our researches go out. But one of the most important things is we collect data. We think that's really important because you can just check the internet and you will probably quickly see uh, a clip stating 21 million victims worldwide with uh, some drums going like boom, 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 boom. And you think, oh my God, 21 million slaves worldwide. But if, if I tell you, that the whole of Africa, the whole of Latin America, Russia, Southeast Asia, do not collect any data on trafficking. Think about that if you connect to those figures. Who has invented that figure? And most of the times I ask our researchers, check please where the figure is coming from. And they do research from report to report to report to report. And in the end, it's just a guess. So always be careful what numbers you follow what numbers you base, base your policy on so that's why we go to the police and we make sure that we check what they collect how many people people they see how many victims they see and those data are being presented to parliament to have the discussion on so that we talk about actual statistics because that's really important but i can tell a lot about what the government needs to do what my office is doing but let's ask another question what can you do because I think 
trafficking to really combat it needs the involvement of government, companies and consumers. And as you all sit here, you are the consumers. You sit behind your computer ordering stuff through the internet. And if you do that, do you ever check who makes that product, product for you? Who makes sure that if you order it at 9 o'clock in the evening, that you receive it the next day? Do you ever, th ever think about who the people are behind the things we order, the services we require, we require? Because you can check it if you want. If you care, you can do so. But most of the times, I see that people are more uh, curious about the new specifications of their phone, how it looks, than thinking or even checking who made it or if there are reports about something amiss. And think, think about it yourself. Do you think uh, checking about that phone, do you want to use it if that phone is made by victims of trafficking? Do you want to become world champion football if we make it? in a stadium that was partly made by slave labor? Do you want to wear beautiful clothing that was made by children who are victims of trafficking? Because you can check if you want. You cannot check everything, of course, but you can do a lot. And I was asked last week by a US student, but I'm alone. I'm a lone consumer. Does it have any, any effect what I do? And I said, yes, it can because I can just point you at a campaign uh, uh, animal welfare organization organized in the Netherlands and that was about a chicken and it was about a tiny chicken that we tend to eat in the Netherlands thinking it's a real chicken because what they do they feed the chicken so quickly that it grows quickly really fat and can't even walk so it's a big fat monster that we eat but in reality if you show that to consumers, they're appalled. And we had a big uproar in the Netherlands, like we don't want to buy that. And now retailers are switching from that monstrous chicken-like thing to more chicken-like food. We had a real life walking around and had a bitter end afterwards, but that's what happens to chickens. Um, but in the end, if we can do that for chickens, I think we can do the same for slaves, modern slaves, victims of trafficking in human beings, if we care. But it really requires the effort of governments that have to invest massively to find those victims. It requires the interest of companies knowing they have a role in this. And it requires your attention as a consumer or as a citizen noticing such situations and speaking out, because you can mean a lot if you care. Thank you.